the mackerel. So we're gonna we're gonna do like a full on bait fishing mackerel one towards the end of, of January. Um, but we're not gonna do it tonight. I'm sorry. It's, it's just Lewis tonight. It's really gonna do that actually. Um, so how many people here are not fishing for like wahoo? Oh, sorry, for a dolphin fish or marlin. Does anyone catch a dolphin fish or marlin? Not for a dolphin fish. Yeah, I think most of you will be. Uh, so that's the other part of tonight. So just before we go, there's there any questions on the mackerel slide? Mm -hmm. Slides what we talked about. Please. Just the retrieve with your yeah. sticks. Good question. So on the stick baits, on the little ones, it's just like a, a little bit of a moon that's sort of darting through the water, but fairly fast. Spewy actually winds fairly fast. Eh? I'll let it sink first, but... Like 10 seconds Yeah, like if I'm down mermaid or palmy and I'm drifting through, I'll let it hit the bottom. Do you? And I'll burn it all the way up. Yeah. It's so non-stop, uh, but yeah. We've got a few guys that um, come into our stall that do that, and I did do a bit of it this year actually, earlier. Yeah. Um, so, is actually, when you get your burly trail happening, you just let it fall through the burly trail. Yeah. And just crank it back up as fast as you can. You see guys out there doing it, they just open the bale up, they let the lure fall. Then they just hits the bottom, they just crank it back fast, really back up through the burly trail from the bottom to the top and get a lot of fish. How deep do you have these two? Uh, how deep 20 metres, yeah. 18 to 22 metres. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, 30 yeah. metres at gravel patch. Yeah. Is that mm. a drift? Uh, drifting as well. Yeah, I just but drift anchor, through, but yeah. yeah. Those, a lot of guys anchor. I do it with my burly trail at anchor. Yeah. 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 I think the biggest thing is like if you troll diamond or whatever later in the season, there's so many mackerel that are mm. real close to the bottom. And heaps of the time down there, you'll get like two turns in, which is about a metre and a half, two metres, and you get one straight away. So they're not always up the top. Mm. But by letting it sink down, you're covering all of that water column. So I think that's just maximising a lot of your opportunities. Oops, yeah. sorry. Guys, before I showed you that picture um, of the bottom on our sound screen, the bottom is like that, and the, the mackerel up here on the bait. If that's, say, um, 40 metres deep, and that comes up 5 metres, and they're sitting about 25 metres down, and your lure's only go down 8 metres, say, um, that, they will not even hesitate. they just go straight up and bite your lure. Okay, because to them, they see it going over the top and swimming, and they're after it. So don't worry if your lure's not down the same depth. When you're trawling baits though, um, you, if you've got a downrigger in, in the zone, going through them, uh, you will get a lot more fish. Different scenario. I think um, speed is sort of like a reaction bite. They see them go past them and they want to get it. Um, where baits is going past them, <laughs> checking it out whether they're going to hit it or not, you know. It's a little bit different scenario. If it's up there, they probably won't worry about it too much. It's just slow. They might attack it, but yeah. yeah. I will say the only bad part about letting that lure mm. sink like nearly all the way, all, all the way to the bottom, you get bitten off a fair bit because there's a loose line and they just sniff it. You don't even know. You just wind <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I use pretty light leader too. Like I only use 20 or 30. That's about it. Yeah, I generally use, I use about 30 pound fluorocarbon when I'm spinning. Yeah. So you're casting me out the depth on it and let it sit? No, I'll just cast, cast as far as I can and leave the I'm bail casting way past it. Oh, that, for that type of fishing, I'm casting. I'm just letting out the, actually I can cast it out the back. You know, a burly trial or whatever I might have. Um, but when I'm casting and then maybe down a bit deeper, I'm getting as much as I can in distance and pulling back through. And it, for those of you, you probably know, for those of you who fished out Palmy and Mermaid, the, especially Palm Beach, the proximity <coughs> of other boats is very close. You can cast the Burley Trail. Just don't get caught in their lines. They get cranky. <laughs> that's why I just drift fish out everywhere with Burley Trail. <laughs> well, that's a good thing too. Yeah. Wind direction, okay. Um, yeah, you know, I've caught mackerel in all winds, but northerly's probably my least favourite. Um, southwest I love, uh, southeast I love. Southeast is by far the best, I reckon. It's rough, but the fish are biting. Yeah. Up to but, what sort of knot? Uh, if you're trawling um, baits um, up to about um, maybe. Uh, have big, depends how big your boat is, but if you've got a six metre boat, maybe 15 to 20 knots. I've trawled even more, 25 maybe, rough as, and caught a lot. Um, and if you're trawling um, um, 
lures. Um, because you're going faster and going into it, it can be quite messy. So maybe 15 to 18 knots maximum. If you've got a little boat that's five metres or four and a half metres, um, you, would, you probably wouldn't be out more than 15 knots, 10 to 15. It's just too wet and uncomfortable. Yeah, and most of them don't have hydraulic steering, so when you get a gravity rod or something, the wind's blowing and the boat's bouncing, it does a lot of this thing. Sorry, mate. Two quick questions. Yes. One, um, what's the maximum depth that you'll be looking to muffle? And um, you have much success after that, you know, first ride of the day. Uh, would you go towards lunchtime and keep persevering, or do you kind of give up? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, I find, I, I don't think I've, except for like the Barrier Reef, I've never caught a mackerel down here over 50 metres, I don't think. 52 yeah. metres, maybe. Okay. Maximum. Um, they're from the shoreline to, 45, 48 metres seems to be their happy area. I don't know why they don't bite beyond that. Like you think they'd be at the 36 fathom reef. I've never caught one of 36 fathoms ever. Not that I really mackerel fish out there, but I have liveys out and stuff like that, you know, and they'd never hit it. Um, I have caught, normally spotted mackerel, I would think was only out to about, um, I always thought maybe 18 to 24 fathoms on the odd day, but I have caught, I caught one actually in a game comp two years ago, outside the fat off, off, um, off Q1 there, at about 50 metres, or is 52 metres. Um, that shocked me. That was, it was maybe a kilometre outside of it. Um, but that's the deepest I've ever caught a spotted mackerel. Mm -hmm. But generally they're in 20 metres, 30 metres, or in the bay. They're in real shallow. They feed on white bait most of the time. Yeah. And time of the day? Yeah. Time of the day, yeah. So morning, a morning bite's the best for Spanish. Uh, spotties are a bit different. You will get a morning bite on spotties too, but they like the sun up and when the birds start to... You, know, you don't see many birds until the sun's sort of off the horizon, if that makes sense, so at 6 a.m. or 6.30. Before that, you don't, you'll see birds, the mutton birds scouting around, but you don't see birds actually working. They won't start working until about 6, 7 o'clock, somewhere in there. So um, if you're casting, that's the time you're going to start casting. You don't really cast much earlier than that. Trawling... Um, You'll get a bite period, as I said, daylight, and then that period. Um, but you always get that. I'm a bit of a uh, on the tide change slash two hours after high tide person. So my bite time, if high tide's at 10 in the morning, and I've got the luxury of being out there for the day, and I just want to stick with mackerel. Um, and last year we did this, um, or this year, sorry, I keep going last year, it's actually still this year. So this season, um, I went Jason, my mate Jason, a few times, and the high tide was like uh, 11 o'clock, and we knew the bite time was at 1 o'clock or 1.30, and we've been out two or three times over different periods, um, and it would have been, might have been 1 o'clock or 2.30 or 11, whatever it was, two hours after high, and smashed it. they just come on. And we'd actually been out in the morning earlier too, by the way. One time there, we'd been out in the morning, we got a couple... And then we ran out again at um, on the bite time, two hours after high, and got like six in the middle of the day. Yep. So it's and that happens with bottom fishing or anything, whiting, doesn't matter what it is. There's always that bite period two hours after high. Uh, I believe it. Anyway. This works too much for me. Yeah. Yep. This trouble is you've got to be a swell and you've got to come back in the run out tide. And the wind's normally up, and it's ugly. <laughs> but the fish are biting. Yes. Uh, those three points that you actually sort of selected for you at all, what, what, yes. what, what, is, what is that? Um, so they're GPS marks that I've got, uh, like, exhibit A. <laughs> uh, so they're, they're strategically where I've caught fish before, and I know that one normally works. I have, I have so many marks on my screen, yeah. and I leave my track marks on, so I know what I did over the previous season, maybe. Yeah. And I change my track colour, either if it runs out or... or um, Maybe every uh, six months or a year or season, what it might be. I'll change it so I know that was last year was yellow, this year is red, whatever it might be. Yep. And I can see what I did previously. Um, sometimes I write down what I... Uh, I always used to write down what I did, but now it's all got my memory. But I'll, I'll write down, um, OK, the wind was blowing, as Graham was saying, from the northeast. It was 15 knots. The water was crappy colour and it had been raining, whatever, before. Yeah, okay. And then 
and try and collate it all together. And there is definitely a pattern. But this year gone was already a, a pattern that doesn't normally match because we had dirty water for six months of the year and the mackerel thick in it, you know. So it's not normal. <laughs> and now it's since November we've had mackerel, it's not normal. So I can't say what it is. I don't think the mackerel are getting less than they're getting more, but I'm happy about that. So <laughs> I don't know. Um, just on that too, guys, like we're all we're all fairly uh, green on our fishing and like we only keep our limit and whatever it might be or catch a few and throw a few back, whatever. But you have to be really aware that they're trying to close fishing as much as quick as they can, as much as they can. So in Western Australia now, if you, I don't know if you guys know this, they have like um, a six year plan of dis demersal closure, which means bottom fishing closure. So, uh, and I'm not quite sure exactly how it is, I don't want to say this, but it's roughly nearly a six year total ban on bottom fishing, which is in place at the moment. And it's over like, so each, each year, I think it's like a two month, three lots of two month closure, or two, three lots of three month closure, <coughs> with a couple of weeks in between. That's only during the day though. During the day, correct, but no one fishes offshore during the night much at all. So <laughs> that's what they give it to It's like, it's like they're saying, you know, you've got, um, the fishermen always complaining about they've got 95% of the ocean to fish, that's not green zones, but the 95% of the ocean they're talking about is in 10,000 metres deep and no one's going to fish there anyhow. Is that six years Australia wide, do you think? No, it's in WA at the moment. It's a state thing. Don't move back to Sydney. <laughs> Are you from WA? <laughs> so you just gotta just gotta be aware uh, what you post. Don't do any stupid numbers on post, whatever you do. Fish. And uh, we get lots sent into us, but I never do big lots. You always only see lots of maybe a couple bag limits, but not much on our postings. Because <laughs> there's a lot of fish out there, but yeah, people don't like to see that. So just be aware what you post and stuff like that. I hate bringing politics into it, but you've got to be aware that there's other people that are trying to stop fishermen from fishing. Okay. And it's mentally, it's the big greatest thing for for relaxation and serenity or whatever, is, is going out in the boat and just being out in the water, you know, or, or from the land, doesn't matter. So it's really important that you focus on, for your kids' sake, you know, um, the future. I don't want to bring politics into it, so I'll get out of that sort of things. Let's go catch some dolphin fish. Okay, so anything else on Spanish mackerel? Okay, that's it. Good. Okay, so um, who's caught dolphin fish this year so far, this season? Okay, a few of you have. Anyone got one over 1.2 metres? I oh, know you're going to stick it. But you got to head off, buddy? Yeah, you sure? Do you want to um, leave your ticket and just give me your phone number? If you win, I'll, I'll give you a buzz. Oh, okay. Yeah, just I'll get Stuart to grab it off you if you don't mind. Thanks, just Stuart. Just one number with me, mate. Sorry. Uh, number five. Number sorry, five. it's gone a bit long, mate. No, What's your name, mate? Richard. Yeah, Dougie. Nice to meet you, mate. Cheers. Okay. Number five. Five. Okay, buddy. Cool. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, mate. So, with the dolphin fish, guys, um, I've given you all the fads there. The fads are the, are the go, okay? And um, the unfortunate part is how many people have boats under... 4.5 meters. A couple of you do, yep. Um, so my boat's, my little tinny is 4.8. I've got two little, one bit bigger. Um, I'll take that out to 42 fathoms, which is nearly the furthest fat out there in the under 100 meters on a good day, <laughs> okay? Um, but generally speaking, you have to pick your day, mate. So if your boat's under five meters um, and it's gonna be 15 knots plus, I would definitely not go out to the fads. The first fad that's in close off of Southport, the one I talked about, we've got Spotty. It's about 12 k's from the seaway out. Um, that is our closest fad. And it does have dolphin fish there, but it, it, they're not stacked there like they are 20 k's out at the 36 fathom fads, okay? Um, the 36 fathom fads uh, has, been, has been fishing really good this year. Um, and the 50 fathom fads have got a lot bigger fish again, okay? That's another 20 k's again, that's 40 k's out. So if your boat's five meters plus, and the weather's under 15 knots and you know what you're doing, you're fine to go out to that distance. As long as you know your fuel and, and your boat's safe and you've got all the gear on board for safety. Um, and then if you've got a bit bigger boat, six or seven meters, then you can go out to the fads that are on the seamounts further out again 
and they're all big. They're all 1.3 to 1.5 metres. They're big fish. Um, Is there mobile reception out there? <laughs> <laughs> no. The mobile reception depends on which... So, it's really weird. Sometimes I can be 60 k's or sure and my phone or all these messages will come through. And next minute I somehow got a... I don't know, it comes in, but it comes in. And I can quickly make a phone call if I need to. Um, but most of the time, no. <laughs> it's generally it's only about 6 or 8k out and it drops out. Yeah. It's terrible. Um, do you remember on your radio, guys, like most of you would have VHF radio these days? Um, if you do... And when you're out a long way and if you do have problems and you can't get anyone on your radio, go to 82, that's a repeater station off Mount Tambourine, and the signal actually go to there to there, and you'll get a lot better um, chance of getting a hold of someone. So 82, okay? It's not an emergency channel, but it's a repeater station. Flare. Brisbane, uh, sorry? Use yeah, use a flare. <laughs> Only burn for a minute or two, so hopefully someone sees it. <laughs> um, yeah. There are many boats out there, would you go there? Like yeah, there is, it's yeah. amazing. Like, we'll go out to, we, we've, we've always fish out wide as well. And um, you'll go there and there'll be two jet skis 40 k's out, a couple of tinnies that are four and a half metres, and, and uh, 50 other boats. Like you, you go on the rise and there's no like Palm Beach. Yeah. There's, there's, what's, these, what's this? There's like 20 boats there, you know, fishing. Yeah. Not all on the fad, they're, they're drifting for kings, whatever they're doing. You know? yeah. um, so anyhow, they're the fads. The, the ones on this side where it says GPS, Marks, Tuna, Dolly, Dollies and Wahoo, they're all actually really good snapper spots too, by the way. Um, they're on reef, so um, a lot of those are like the diamond reef and, um, and spots where I catch my Spanish mackerel. And some are down off Tweed Heads. If you're from, anyone here from down Tweed Heads by at all? Yep, so it's a good spot down there, mate. Um, on that 40, 50 metres um, on the left side, the, the last three are really good areas for um, dolphin fish as well in that area. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of dolphin fish caught this year, out, we call it out in the paddock. The out in the paddock means it's not at a fad. It's actually, they're just swimming around with chasing the bait. And they're really good size. And uh, I haven't done this for maybe 10 or 15 years since I caught like a metre 20 or metre 30 dolly, like within a K of the seaway. But this year there's been a few caught. I've got one yet this year, but a few customers have. There's been a few just around the blocks, which around is the blocks, close. Yeah, three, four yeah. k's northeast. In sea green, there. horrible water, but there's mm. a lot of bait there, so there's a lot of fish. There. It's true. Got marlin there the other day too. Is that what you look for? Just bait. Like looking for bait, mate. They're feeding on the bait. Um, I cleaned some dollies the other day, and they're full of little, um, like trigger fish. They look like little uh, leather jackets. Has anyone noticed that this year? And little, and little toadies. Yeah, full of them, eh? Yeah. So uh, they're obviously um, not just feeding on white bait and pillies, they're feeding on other stuff as well. That's schooled up. They love have, having toadies apparently because it gives them a bit of a fix, apparently. <laughs> oh, no. That's true, that's fish to do it. They're especially uh, dolphins. Dolphin. Dolphins do it do, as well. Dolphin, dolphins, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's true. It's that's true. Why they've got colour on it. Sorry? No, that's why they like Stu's coral trout colour. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Are they really brightly coloured, yellow, and then some are real dull? Is that different sex? No, that, um, so the, the female is the one that's got like the more um, sort of like pointed round, head sort of thing, yeah. and the male's got the big drop down with the eyes right at the top. Yeah. That's the male. Oh, right down the bottom, sorry. Um, so um, that's how you tell a male to female, but the colouring is a lot of time, a lot of times to do with their aggression and if they're really like really go get us you know and uh, they're hungry and they'll be fully lit up but if they're not lit up and they're just sort of basic color uh, those guys are um, not really um, not really feeding much yep yes Yeah. Oh, is that right, eh? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. The brighter ones are down deeper, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, that's right. It's the same when you're fishing in deep water out here that like we catch a flame snapper and these beautiful red colours. They're all in three hundred metres deep. Um, yeah, it's but, yeah. Mm, it's a fair run. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good lifestyle. It's yeah. not windy, but yeah. <laughs> Good money. Um, yeah, so um, getting back to the, to the trawling. So we've been using skirts, and um, our skirts have been an array of colours and types, but just to give you the basic for you guys to learn, is your dark colours, like so, are in close to the boat. If you have a lot of white water, and, and that sort of colour in the prop wash is quite hard to see, okay? The colour's easy to see. Silhouette, they see it, they nail it. Um, and then as you drop back further, you'll drop back. Your light colour gets lighter and lighter, okay? So this gets further and further back, lighter and lighter. The other scenarios, but it just doesn't seem to matter, make as much um, as a effect on the fishing um, as the colour does, but the colour's important. Dark colour close, lighter out back, but head shape. So traditionally, a head that's um, short and squat like that uh, would be closer to the boat, okay? And then a head that's quite long like that will be further out the back, okay? So the short ones make it the biggest bubble trail and making itself look a lot bigger, presenting itself bigger in amongst all that whitewash. And this head here is not doing much, not pushing much uh, air, but still a lot of action out, out in the back in the clear water. So that's how the scenario sort of works. So the rules of, of lures. Yeah, correct. So the one set of slant like that, that fellow there, mate, um, that's going to have a lot more action. It's going to slide every now and then and, and do a lot more. The ones that are getting the air tend to be track. They're, they're wobbling, but they tend to be tracking more this this way. They get air and they shudder out, and then they come back down again, get more air, get back down again. Yeah. Um, uh, not really. It's more again. Um, Matching the hatch, so to speak. Um, so the bait at the moment, you know, marlin have been feeding on the, other, the same sort of stuff as well. Um, not that I've been cutting any marlin, marlin don't check out what's in their gut, but, um, but traditionally um, they're feeding on little yakas and slimies and stuff like that, mate. The other day there were, did anyone get to those little bonita that were out here a couple of weeks ago? Yep, they're good mackerel baits, freeze them up, mate. Spanish mackerel. Um, but, um, they're, they're obviously a bit bigger, so the guys are trawling a bit bigger lures at that time, like sort of eight inch, I didn't bring any, they got downstairs, but oh, maybe that size, so I got one in your bag, that's why I put it in there. That size, that's, they caught bigger fish that day, because that's what they were feeding on, the, the bigger fish were in. And that's when uh, a couple of charter boats, it was one of the, was it? I don't remember the name of it. Um, <laughs> True Blue. True Blue. Yeah. They got one just out on the blocks here that was like nearly 100 kilos on that same time trawling with bigger skirts. So if you want to put one skirt out, put the biggest one in close. Okay? Again, it's more presentable in that dirty in that uh, white water. Okay? Doesn't have to be doesn't have to be um, so much colour, just big. Uh, yeah, I'll draw that for you. So around about um, similar to similar to what we talked about before, if you chase a mile and sort of like uh, if you're running teasers like Graham was talking about before, you're running a a, a bird teaser or a daisy chain or a strip teaser or a witch doctor, um, your first, that's only about eight or 10 metres back. Your first lure is going to be right at its backside. So it'll be 15 metres maybe at the most. So that's your first lure. And then 25 and then 35 and then maybe 45. And if you want to put a fifth one out, because everything's on the top, it's easy to manage. It might be 50 metres or 60 metres back. Okay. Do your teasers ever get hit? All the time. My witch doctor, I could, I should bring in, I'll bring him in next time we do the same. Oh, sorry, man. Be careful of this. Um, this is a witch, thanks, buddy. This is a witch doctor. Um, I'll bring mine in, but my, it's scuffed everywhere. And, uh, and this is all smashed and cracked. I think I'm missing half my glass. And I have never lost, I've had it for 20 years, I reckon. This is Pete Foot, first brought him out in early. I think he brought this started in late 70s, early 80s, but mine's probably a, a late 80s model or 90s model. And uh, it's it's been hammered many many times. Yeah, a lot of time you don't see it actually get hit because it's on a big rope and it's just in the water doing its thing. Um, but when you bring it up, it's oh, that's a new mark on it. <laughs> yeah. How far and how deep? Uh, those get down. These are very heavy. They they uh, they're made here in Australia. They're very expensive, but they're very good. 
and they swim down about a metre and a half, two metres, and they actually dive and swim. And they flick off, they flick off light under the water maybe 30 to 40 metres either side. And if it's a clear day and, and not too rough, and um, you look, again, it catches your attention, you look, what was that? And the lights ting through the water. Have you guys seen this sort of thing happen yet? Have you guys seen it? It's amazing. Did you next to the teaser? Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, they do, they will. It attracts a lot of things. But I still don't use it for mackerel, though. <laughs> I probably should. Um, but yeah, no, they're good, very good. Um, so, but bird teas are very popular. You guys have got a strip teaser. That's just single strip teaser, which a lot of people are selling. Um, and these are okay. You run those off the back of a bird or off the back of a squid skirt, a squid, that type of squid. Um, you guys have got the triple one, which is a better one. So these things are quite amazing in the water. So um, you've got one of those in your bag. So I'd utilize that behind. You could actually put it behind that if you wanted to rig it up as a knot, a lure, as is a teaser, because this will actually get air and actually pull along and that'll be glistening behind it, you know. Rig it up behind that. Um, or you'd rig that up as a lure. Okay, but utilise that, guys. That's very good. It's going to attract a lot of fish. How fast would that be uh, About 10 metres max, 8 metres. Yeah, 10 metres. Like, if you've got a bird on it, say we sell the birds downstairs, a bird on it, um, the bird should nearly be, like, like the line that is attached to it's not actually in the water, it's actually on the angle and it's sitting on the surface like that, doing that, you know? So very close. What species would you mainly live for? Uh, male and a dolphin fish. Uh, but it also attracts wahoo and everything else. Yep. Yep, tuna, definitely tuna. Um, sorry? Sorry. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so I like to keep mine on the right side because I'm always looking around, keep an eye on that area, you know? Um, when I'm driving, so, or if you'd like looking behind you, it's a little bit hard, it's easier to look that way than look behind you that way, because you're normally driving that side of the boat if you're a side console, for example. Um, so I keep it on the port side of the boat, which is my right side looking back, and, um, and it's very close, and it's tied off just to, I've got, on my tinny, it's tied off just to my rail, actually. <laughs> yeah, just with um, some sort of three to six mil cord, Rope, whatever. Yep, we've got teaser lines down there. I think it's about five mil, six mil. Something like that, yeah. 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 It's just like that Dyneema cord type stuff. Yeah. And better results with my head? Yeah, definitely. In that sort of fishing, in, in skirted low fishing, yeah, 100%. Yep. The only time I don't put it out if the fish are on thick or if I just don't have the manpower, it's too hard. So if you've got two people on the boat, you should have a teaser out. If you've got one person, it's up to you <laughs> how venturous you are. Yeah. If, you, if you use it the diving one, you wouldn't have a teaser yet? Um, no, not the mackerel, not the ones we talked about earlier, no. I, I don't, you can, but I don't. Yeah. Okay, so your skirt lures, you've, you've learned about those heads and the, the colours. Trawling speed, exactly the same guys, six to seven knots. Okay. Um, and um, the small, the other thing I mentioned before, the bigger lure like that fellow there might be your closest lure, okay? And the smallest lure is going to be the one the most further it's out. Okay? Just it seems to work better that way. Don't put a big one the furthest out. Okay. Um, anything you want to add to that, Stuart? That's about it. I think you definitely need yeah. a gimbal belt of some description, but don't have oh, yeah, enough yeah. to answer that. But, um, yeah. Apart from that, that's about it. The yeah. easiest way to see what, where you put your lures in skirt-wise, I would just run the closest one about the second or third way about. Mm. So it's pretty within that eight to 10 meters type of sort of thing. And the teaser I run just on the inside of that. Yeah. So you run your furthest lures out first and work your way back in. Yeah. Okay. Put the teaser, put the teaser at last. Sorry, do you ever so, run the um, skirts with divers? With divers? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I do. So, good question. I, I was meant to tell you this earlier. So, <laughs> because we've got the luxury this year, if you're fishing inside 50 metres of catching mackerel and wahoo and yellowfin tuna, love deep divers. Um, I would be running, um, this time of the year, I'd be probably running two divers and two skirts. <coughs> if I'm on my own, I'd be running one diver and maybe two skirts or one skirt. You'd have your skirts further out. 100%, yeah. So, 
I replaced them at about uh, 15 metres, 25, um, 40 and maybe 50. Okay. But definitely run two divers in close. Once you're fishing outside of 50 metres, get the divers out of the water and put your skirts all out. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, Stewie said, rod, rod holders, definitely good. Oh yeah, the, yeah, sorry. Um, I didn't grab one of the, um, the, little, the little daisy chain ones. I didn't grab it. Uh, if you do mind, don't Yeah, thank you. Um, Pakulas do, I had Pete do a talk here uh, recently. Did anyone come to that talk? A couple of you did. And did anyone try what he talked about yet? How'd you go? Yeah. <laughs> Not what I want to hear, Brian, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you probably haven't had a chance because the weather's been a bit cruddy in here. Oh, I, I tried once. Yeah, okay. Did you go today at all, mate? No. No. I haven't been How about down the back there, mate? How'd you go? Have you been out since? We went out the weekend after. Yep. Oh, well done. Oh, good. That's a go. Yeah, that's right. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Are you... <laughs> Let me say that, Matt. <laughs> you meant to say we had a great time and I was there. Um, but anyhow, um, he does he does lure packs like this type of thing here. They're fully rigged and they're like the pattern. There's actually a... He puts a diagram in there exactly where to place each one, how far back, da 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 and it is like a really um, by the book perfect scenario and works very well. Um, but we can sort of show the same thing just by your own, if you don't like that type of lure, whatever colours you want. And these lures that my lovely wife's got here right now are another thing that he's done. Has anyone tried these at all yet, the daisy chain lures? Okay, so um, these have never been used in Australia much at all because everyone here for somehow sticks by the game book rules for trawling, which these are not legal, so to speak, if you are trawling a game comp, because you can't have more than one lure on the on the uh, line together. But these are actually got a bird at the front doing this, and they've got the other one swimming behind it. It's just like a miniature teaser. So actually, if you've got that on the water, you don't need a teaser in a little boat. That's that's it. But the last lure, which is a proper lure, has actually a rigged hook in it, and they get a lot of fish. Okay, so in the states where they, they're legally allowed to use this in game comps, then they smash it. But the so Pete's just like stuff is not gonna do one. So he has, and uh, and a lot of our customers have been doing really well. Like, Graham, you've been using yours. How'd you go? Swim right there. Yeah, yeah. So um, did you get any strikes today? Then? I oh, got the one strike. Hard body. Yeah. Hard body one or. Yeah. I see trolling hard body was good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. So Graham's troll went out today, trolling hard body, deep dives with skirts, and got the hit on the hard body. Did you get your skirts picked off for Graham? Okay. Um, there is bigger sizes and different colours and that sort of stuff too. Okay. I'll pass one around, you can have a look. That one's the. Uh, uh, the little one. I'll pass the little one. Sorry, is it the right one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Pete's suggestion is the second lure out. Okay. Yeah, it's the perfect spot for it. Yeah. So where do you have it at, Graham? Long corner. So the second one out? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so anyhow, that's another thing, guys. Um, so just tools to trade, yeah, rod holders. You know, get a bit sore if you get into a fish for a while. Lure bags, uh, great thing to have on your, put your lures in. They just, um, if you haven't got one, don't know about it, but what it looks like is that type of thing there. So your lures get little pockets and they sit in the pockets and at um, the end of the day you can just hose it all out, hang it up and hose it out. Great, great thing about, they're about 40 bucks, your price, 45 bucks, something like that. Um, and then when you're fielding fish, make sure you're nice, got a bit of length to it, don't use a short knife. Most dolphin fish and mackerel are quite deep this way. You want a decent knife to be able to cut all the way through, um, and especially skinning it. And um, there are things like this here that you can put your rig lures in if you don't want to use a bag with just a, like a soft plastic type pouch and just put each rig lure in each bag, each one. Easy, compact, 
and up the front of the boat somewhere, out of the way. Um, braids, I was going to show the difference in braid thing, but that's, you guys know, there's thin braids out there, okay? Very thin. Not necessarily deer, just, just thin. And um, I think that's about the tools. Oh, really important. I don't mind you guys losing rods and reels, but um, it is really important that you have a safety strap on your rods and reels when you're trawling overheads that have the ability to put something clip onto it. Um, they're like a $20 investment with our, or you can make up your own, I don't care. But just um, have it on because a lot of time people forget to put the ratchet on and they're trawling and if your rod's not in the rod holder properly and you run out of line and you, do, and you have done a good knot, normally if we do it here it's a good knot, um, it'll rip out the rod out of the rod holder. Okay? Um, and a lot of time you look back and on the rod's gone. You know, or someone will run over your line because you've already let it all out and you've got 300 metres out and they've passed 300 metres behind you thinking it's clear and they've got your line right out of the rod hole as well. So a lot of things go on with you your ratchet on. So check, make sure your ratchet's always on. Okay, a lot of people say, oh, no, I can hear the braid. That's not the case. Especially you've got, got the tunes dumping away in your boat. doesn't happen that way. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else to talk about? Anything, anything you want to know about, this, uh, about today's stuff, guys? No one's asked me yet about fads trawling. Oh, yes, sorry. sorry okay, that leader there is um, very good stuff. That's what we use to rig our lures on, and we've been using that for about a year and a half now. Uh, it is advantageous in your fishing. It's, it's actually, um, we use it on deep droppers as well. It's, it's UV. So to the fish, it's different to the way we see it the water. I don't know if they do see it or don't see it. But um, particularly when we're bottom fishing, it, it, your bites are much more enhanced. I think it's the same with trawling as well. It's also super limpy, like very, uh, very good for lure action, not so rigid, and it's um, also very tough too. Very tough. Yeah. Uh, it's UV, UV enhanced. So it's leader. It's UV enhanced. So if you put a black light on it, it goes purple. Put a black light on normal fishing line, it doesn't change colour. That's 130, isn't it? 130 pounds. 130 so pound. Yeah. Yeah, very thin for 130 pounds. So when you rig up your lures, guys, when, you, when we do your lures for you too, by the way, um, we charge you f for the lure and the hook rig and you get 30% of the lure as well. And, um, and we don't charge you for using that stuff and rigging it all up for you. But that's for you guys to do your own rigging if you want to do your own rigging. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions at all? Yes. Trolling past the fads. Yeah, trolling past the fads. Good question. Okay. Um, there's a lot of um, ethics on <laughs> trolling past, past fads when those boats are there. Um, one is if you've got a boat there that's maybe bait fishing or casting lures, I wouldn't go between him and the fad if he's only 50 metres off the fad. And, and a lot of the time the fish aren't right on the fad, they're away from the fad. The bigger ones are definitely away from the fad. You rarely get a big fish right at the fad. Um, they'll be 50 metres, 100 metres off. Um, I rarely get a fish uh, south of the fad, it's always north of the fad. But the big ones you get south, out, away from the fad. That, the fad says yellow, the yellow boy, fish attracting device, yeah. So the fads are uh, um, on the right side of your page there that you've got. They're all the marks here. So, um, and they're, it's not the boy that attracts the fish, it's the crap hanging off the rope going to the bottom. They've got all like fancy stuff on there that um, holds the bait and holds the fish. So everyone thinks other oh, fish are at the yellow boy. That's not the case. They're normally, normally if, if that's the boy there, that's south and that's north, the rope and the, there's a current's always going that way. So the boy's hanging back that way. And most of the stuff's on the rope about halfway down. And the fish, if you come up like that, you're about probably 100 metres up from the fad. So most of the fish are in that vicinity. Um, but they'll swim around the fad, they'll be in the area. Um, but, but we always start our drifts 200 metres up way from the fad. Up. Yeah. yeah. And you get fish nearly straight away, like way up. Or if we're trawling, yeah. we're expecting a hit way past the fad, like we've gone past the fad, the lures have gone past the fad, and then we might be, the boat's maybe 200 metres of lines of 50, 80 metres past the fad, and round, 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 they take off, you know. If we choose lures on those fad lines, wouldn't it? A lot. But you get a little, you've got to be careful, at some, especially at the ones that wider, they get spiros jumping in the water there. A lot of sharks there. Is that right? 
Yeah, they smash it, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Just jumps out. There's a guy that goes out to that one 300 metres deep out here, like that's the abyss, and there's big sharks there, yeah. and he just jumps in the water and spears I've it. I've seen someone post a video of a grey white at the Point Danger smash or something. Point Lookout or Point Danger? That's the Point Lookout one, he jumps out. One and a half north. Yeah, that's Point Danger. That's yeah, it, that's yeah, the so one. Yeah, he's, the guys are crazy there. Yeah. And it's like 40 k's off Point Lookout, like it's, it's <laughs> 60 k's off Brisbane. Yeah. And they just jump in the water. I wouldn't do that. No. But they get big dolphin fish. It's yeah. worth casting plastics in the likes of the case. Yeah, we do very well. Uh, so <laughs> you've got some plastics in there and jig heads as well, exactly what we use. Um, but anything in that sort of size is fine. And that sort of size hook, that size head, which is a three quarter, I think, six oh. Um, that's perfect. That's around the rope as well? Yeah, no, well, I, I, again, we start up way up yeah. and we're casting, we can't even reach the fad when we're casting and working it back to the boat and eventually you'll go past the fad, drift past it. Um, yeah, but it works well. Uh, if you see them jumping a lot and they are, and you can see them visually within about two metres of the top, then don't let it sink too far, just, just crank it and, and twitch it and stop, twitch and stop, sort of work it quite fast. Yeah. If they're not visually there, but you can see them on the sounder, let it sink quite a fair bit and then work it back up through it. Yeah. It's true, he does a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I always like letting it sink just because you come more of that water again. Yeah. yeah. Mm. They might not necessarily be out the top. Normally, the bigger ones are under them. They're not really on the top with uh, it. Yeah. yeah, I've caught them on metals, on stick baits, obviously, and those little diving lures, a uh, little um, heavy lures. But yeah, I've caught lots of metals over the years, casting metals. So pitch jigging's good too. Um, we, d we just got into a bit of it last season, <coughs> this year, last season. <laughs> um, and um, I've got some actually stuff here, I'll pass this around. These actually new come out, but this is the sort of stuff that we're using, not too big, keeping it around about 60 to 100 grams, 130 max. Um, and not too fast, sort of slow pitch, but a little bit fast, if that makes sense. Yeah, and just sort of working it up, working it up, working it up, working it up. When you've got a lot of boats around and they do push down, 100%. And actually Steve, um, Prawning's Farm Steve, put us onto that about five years ago. Um, he was out there, um, micro jig, he does the micro jigging for, for snapper. And he catches dollies obviously uh, with baits and, and uh, metals and stuff. Um, but he was jigging for snapper and kingies around, around near a fad and just jigging up. And, and then he's got hit down, like fairly long way down and pulled up a dolphin fish and he's like holy crap and then he got into them you know he got stacked into them and the same deal you could see them saying they were kings but the boats that were around trolling around had pushed them all the way down yeah so and with dolphin fish too it's quite often that maybe even the whole school will move away because i don't know if you guys have seen i've seen it a lot of time but you'd be at a fad or near a fad and you'll see them jumping maybe 300 meters away from the fad the whole school's moved off the fad away from it. So don't, and everyone's just going around the fad. So keep a visual eye around you looking for them jumping. If they're jumping, they're gonna be feeding, normally. But they're very frustrating this year. There's a lot of it of not... Um, and they're not committing. Not, not committing, <laughs> that's the <laughs> word. And they're big, there's some big ones out there this year. Bigger than I've never seen before, um, in close. There's these fabulous, yep, sorry. How do you plan like your day trip? Like sometimes hmm. If I'm going to go chase dolphin fish, do you mean? Uh, no. do oh, so, okay, so uh, if I'm going to go chase dolphin fish, I'll get up really early. I, I need to be there before five. So you already plan like they want to chase the dolphin fish? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. So my day is normally very, at the moment, very short lived. So at the moment, I can't even go fishing because we're too busy here. But <laughs> I would normally say a week ago, when I went out last time, last Wednesday, last week, um, we went out at four. We were up there at five. Graham was already there. What time did you get there, Graham? Just four. Yeah, did you? Yeah. So there's already four boats there? Today there were 10 boats there. Oh, wow. We get through. First up. Yeah, okay. Uh, early. Yeah. So, um, but. If you get the earliest boat gets there, normally gets them, but if it's a bite time, they may not get them. Okay? So sometimes you don't need to go early. You can uh, chase mackerel for the day too, like... A mackerel now? Okay, so if I was going to get, let's say, now, like this week, I'd probably be putting all my, hinge on my bets on going, chasing Spanish mackerel, 
and maybe get a yellow pin because there's a few yellow pin caught today as well just on the closed reefs and I'd be going out trolling the deep divers that went around earlier and I'd be doing four deep divers if I got the ability to do four rods at once um, from daylight till seven o'clock. Um, I made, if I found a bit of bait schools, I then may switch to casting, like I said, or I'm going to put out skirts and maybe a diver, one diver or two divers, and trawl the bait. And I might either go north, depends on the wind, and work my way up to Kurang Cove area in about 30 to 50 metres, I'll zigzag between 30 and 50 metres. Or I'll go south, if I'm out the front of the seaway, I might go south, if there's going to be a bit of a southerly come in. I might go, before it comes up, I'll work my troll down to maybe um, Burley or Kira. It's like talking about a three hour period here. And then I'll come back up, up on the same depth or a bit closer. I'll probably go down on about 40 metres and come back on about 25, 30. Yeah. And the subtle is behind me. Because subtly pushes a clear of water in. So do your eastern run down and do your western run because the water comes in a bit clearer closer on the way back. It happens that quick, it comes in clear quick. As it blows, say, 15 knots or something, 20 knots. Sorry? Last question, um, the, you were saying to start off now, at this time of year with the hard bodies, mm. when, when do you usually change the skirt? Uh, uh, as I was saying, if I see bait schools and the mackerel, I might have got one or two mackerel or nothing, and it's just not happening, um, I might it depends when I see lots of fish on the sand, I get a bit possessed if I see lots of fish on the sand, I've got to keep trolling deep you know? I'm going to get one. Um, but if I don't see much happening um, on the bottom and in the mackerel on the sounder, I'll definitely switch it by, by 7 o'clock, mate. 6.30 even, 7. Yep. And then I'll trawl skirts, I might trawl still one diver, and if I see the birds around, I'm going to maybe switch to casting, I'm going to trawl that, that bait area. Yeah, and I'll come in as close as 20 metres and go as far as 40, 50 metres. But I'll, I'll generally work an area one way and work an area, come back the other way. Does that make sense? I don't do zigzags that go 2Ks that way, then 2Ks that way. I might go 500 metres. So I go between, say, 40 and 43 metres or something like that. And then I'll go back up, say, where I know the reef is, say, in that 30 to 25 metres, 20 metres, on the way back or something like that. Yeah, you got to trawl over. You got to trawl most of the time over some sort of reef, because that's where the bait is and that's where the fish are. Yeah, you will get fish. So when we come back that Wednesday, Graham, um, from up north there to Fad North Number Fourteen back, um, like I, we never ran over three mile and just free swimming. You know, they're in the middle of nowhere. There's no reef there. I know that. Um, they were just swimming around on the surface. Yeah, that's what I was going yeah. to ask you. I went out to Fad this morning. Yes. Week, and um, there's not a lot. Yeah, that's right. Do you do yeah. anything? No, I'd I, I pull the lures in and get out there and put them back out again, yeah. mate. Yeah, 100%. So if, you, if I was you, I'd be going, this time of year, it's got to be Spanish around um, the nine on the eastern side of it. Yeah. And I, in, I like that sort of 80 foot depth, which is about 24 metres or whatever it is. And, I, and it sort of goes like from the southern where, where it comes up real shallow there and go on about a northeast angle for about 2 k's up to the top of it, just heading north side of it, and trawl a couple of laps on there, maybe go one west at the top, then come back down again on the outside. And if you get nothing else, about two laps like that, so I do figure sevens on there, um, then I'll pull up and go to the fad. Or we'll go to the fad first and come back in there later, you know, depends. If it's gonna come up windy, I'll try and go to my deepest first and work my way back in, down your way. Yeah. Any other questions at all, guys? Okay, you guys are all good fishermen, I think, so uh, you just got to put it all to practice. But we're just really lucky we got a lot of fish here this year. It's really good. Sorry we dragged on a bit tonight, about 20 minutes over schedule. <laughs> Thank you. So, no other questions, guys? You're all done? You're all ready? Okay. So, first off, I wish you all a Merry Christmas, guys, and have a good one. Enjoy it with your family. And uh, hopefully the weather's good and we can get out to a bit of fish. I can't, but you guys can. We're too busy. <laughs> Stuart, <laughs> well, the best I can do at the moment is go check my crab pots early in the morning. That's about it. Okay, Graham, you're the first gentleman to pull one out. So, first one, guys, about uh, 450 bucks worth of gear. You've got about nearly $1,500 of gear, so it's Christmas time. You've got eight prizes, okay? 
Uh, that one there, what have we got, Zago? You got one and two there, Graham. We'll do, we'll do the second one, right? Number 17. Number 17. What's the name? Is it good? Uh, oh, with Adam, it says. Oh, there you go. Well done. So, I'm going to come up here, mate. I'll pass this to you. Always good to see someone new get one. What's your name, mate? Adam. Yeah, Doug, Adam. How you going, buddy? Thanks, mate. Thank you You're welcome, mate. Enjoy. Okay, the second one is about uh, nearly 300 bucks worth. Oh, sorry. Oh, Stewie? That's right. That's right. Yeah. What, what have you got, man? Stuart, Stuart, tell us. Big fingers. <laughs> That's all right, mate. Okay, number lucky seven. Must be down the front here somewhere. Well done, mate. Is it Slade? Yeah. Yep. That's it, Slade. Well done, buddy. Congratulations, Cheers. mate. Cheers. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay, third one, I think, is still around 200 bucks. A little bit over, maybe, 240 something. Um, Number 13. Brody? Well done, mate. I see questions coming. Payback. <laughs> Thanks, Brody. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Okay, next one's fourth, which I think is still around $150, nearly $200. Thank you, Graham. Wow, right down the back, 33. Neil? Well done, matey. See you, Neil. I'll get Masako to bring it down to you, mate. Thanks, Masako. Next one, I think, is. Uh, fifth, that's right. Still about 100 something bucks worth. 27. Number 27. Thanks. Chris. Yep, yeah, that's you, mate. Thanks, Mr. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Next one, number six. I think it's still over 100 bucks worth. Or around that. Um, yep, yeah, thanks, mate. A little high one. Sorry, guys, at the front. <laughs> uh, Tanya. 20. 29. Well done, Tanya. Thank you. And then. Uh, is this the last one? Second last no, two, second last one. Oh, finally. Number two. Justin. Hey. Hey, well done, buddy. Getting down to the nitty gritty, but still. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thank you. And last one. So, guys, thanks for coming along. We will stay open for about an hour. You're welcome to go downstairs. Um, if not, we're here to help you out over the due course of your holidays, okay? Number, number, sorry, number nine. Number nine. Tom. Well done, Tommy. You, you deserve this. <laughs> cheers, mate. Thank Merry you, mate. Oh, yeah, cheers, mate. Thank you. So, guys, thanks for everything. Um, and uh, if you do come in over the next few days and we're busy, please be patient with us. <laughs> we're here to help you. Um, and if you got get back to the not setting with any dramas or that, we'll try and help you if it's not too busy to help you out, OK? And good luck out there. And have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks, Graham.